Hey guys, it's Cass, nurse practitioner with Titan Medical Center. I want to talk to you guys today about hormones, testosterone in particular. So I have a lot of questions from friends, family, and my patients. Should I test my hormones? Well, that's a great question. I think the answer is yes. So some may ask, what are the symptoms of low testosterone? Well, some of the symptoms may be being tired constantly, being irritable, depressed, not interested in events with friends and family, decreased muscle mass and strength, slower recovery, decreased sexual health, sexual dysfunction, weight gain. Those are all some of the signs of low testosterone. We, as human beings, naturally, our testosterone can decrease with age, illnesses, with medication and lifestyle choices, such as you know, being overweight, obesity, lack of exercise. So some of the benefits of balancing out your hormones, such as your testosterone, can be increasing your quality of life, being able to enjoy friends and family, and you know events around you more often also having better energy levels being less irritable increasing your sexual health increasing overall wellness decreasing fat increasing muscle mass increasing muscle gain decreasing insulin resistance so evaluating if you are deficient on your hormones is achieved with a simple blood test we can know where your levels fall. We'll find out in a few days. We can put together a plan to balance out your hormones and bring back the happiness and you know vitality to your life. Give us a call, 727-389-3220. I'd love to help you out. And once again, guys, stay strong and stay healthy out there. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, bro? Alright. You telling me you're rolling? Yep, yeah, we're rolling. Alright, guys. So, uh, you know, getting haircuts is a part of your health, too. You know, you want to make sure that you're all clean, you know, you're doing the right thing as far as that goes. And uh, we all care about what our hair looks like, I'm sure, especially if you're not wearing a hat every day and you're not bald. So, at that point, you got to make sure you're going to the right person. Now, I know a lot of people that go and they say, well, I don't really care, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll go get a haircut at Quick Cuts down the road. <laughs> the problem is when you go into Quick Cuts, you might not get the exact same person. They might just be on their first day of the job. Now, not to say that Quick Cuts don't have good people in there, but at that point, you got to go with somebody that's experienced, that's done this for a long, long time and cut a lot of different people's hair, right? Because different people got different kind of hair. It is what it is. Some might be thicker, some might be thinner, some might be more coarse. So you gotta know who is gonna do the best for your hair. So guy-wise, there's no better pick than my man Jay the Barber. Big Jay the Barber behind me who's cutting me up. Now he does me a solid and he does me hooking me up, coming to the office and hooking me up like that, which is a premium if you want something like that. Because the man schedule is booked. But if you're looking for somebody in the Tampa Bay area, that's really gonna do you right as far as you looking good, making sure you're confident coming out with your haircut, then I would definitely contact Big J the barber. And he honestly he cuts me up every week, two weeks if I can get him in, because of my schedule or his. So at that point you gotta make sure that you're contacting him. I think he's got all different types of ways where you can get a hold of him via social media, via his phone, and you, know, you can look him up on there and I'm sure he'll hook you up. Now he just doesn't cut my hair. He's cut all kinds of different people's hair, like I said. From athletes to rappers, entertainers. You know, just a regular average Joe, too. Kids. So if you guys are looking for somebody, definitely contact Big J the Barber. He'll get you right, looking good. Whether you got a special event, or you just got your weekly haircut or maintenance haircut you got coming up, give him a call, contact him, and you guys can get faded by the best and look your best. Because like I said, it's all about feeling good, looking good, and performing good. Now we can help you out with the body portion, but for your hair, got to go to the man himself. All right? So contact him. Tell him John from Titan sent you and get hooked up. 
Jay, I appreciate you coming by. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Clean me up. Get me all fresh. I mean, we got big events coming up, so I got to look straight. Plus the TV every week. It's just been crazy. So thank you again. If you guys need to know, Big Jay the Barber, Tampa Bay, all at Tampa Bay. He's here for your haircutting needs, especially you guys out there, kids. You want to look fresh for school. You want to look good for your job or just some kind of event you got coming up. Make sure you contact Big J the Barber. Tell him John from Titan sent you. Cool, cool. Thanks, bro. Appreciate yourself. Thank you. Yes, sir. See you guys. All right, bro. Guys, it's Big Drew, I'm here at Titan Medical. Great news, we now draw blood in-house. I'm about to get my blood drawn. The doctor is here, so we do blood work here. Get your blood work done here. 912 Channel Side, Titan Medical. We do everything, baby, let's get it. Hey guys, John here, and we are now officially doing blood draws in-house in Titan Medical Center. We're being able to test and collect your blood a lot quicker and more convenient for our patients. So you can come right down here and get your blood drawn. We can get it all going for you and get the results and get back to you a lot quicker so we can help you guys. Big Drew's in the house right now. He's getting his blood drawn. We're gonna test for things, not just his hormones, like free and total testosterone, estradiol levels, progesterone, IGF-1 levels, B12 levels, but we're also gonna test for his liver, his kidneys, his cholesterol, his thyroid, PSA, which is his prostate. We wanna make sure that, that is all in check. We're also gonna do another test, his hemoglobin A1C, which is a three month read of his blood sugar levels. These are essential tests to know what's going on inside your body so you can not only have a better quality of life, but you can perform at your very, very best. And we wanna make it very convenient and very easy. We have our nurse practitioner here drawing the blood so it's above board and who's taking your blood and she's very good at what she does. So if you guys want your blood drawn and you want it done quickly and the most convenient way, you guys can come directly into Titan Medical Center. Now we can still send you to a lab for request if you're not in the area. But if you are, why not come down to our beautiful facility, get your blood drawn, and get the results a lot quicker. What do you think, Drew? Feel great, it was simple, it was easy, it didn't feel any pain, the blood came out real quick, I'm ready to go, I'm excited about the results. Come check us out, 912 Channel Side, we do blood in-house, Titan Medical is Big Drew approved. So make sure you guys are getting your blood checked and you're getting monitored. Give us a call or text, 727-389-3220 to set up your blood draw today. Okay guys, so we're walking back the blood because once you draw the blood, it's gotta get centrifuge and spun down to make sure it does not coagulate. So we have this right in house as well. As you can see, we put it in this nice centrifuge right here. It's gonna spin the blood for about eight minutes and we're gonna be able to get this picked up and all the results back to us, hopefully in 24 to 48 hours. Be able to contact you within three days to make sure we get you all set up and ready to go. It's that easy guys. So car text us today, let us help you out and monitoring and make sure you guys are feeling your best and performing at your very best. What's up guys, John here from Titan. 
and I'm here with beautiful Zoe, and she's got one of our awesome pink Titan Medical Center camel outfits on. She looks awesome in it. So let's break down what's going on here on Zoe. So how are you doing today, Zoe? Good, I'm doing great. Doing great. So she's in, in the studio showing us this awesome outfit and how it looks on you. Very awesome. So this, we have the crisscross new sports bra. The matching sports bra type medical center goes with the leggings. These are very, very high quality. They're four way stretch. They're gonna be very comfortable on you. So if you're walking around or you're in the gym, maybe possibly doing squats, they're not gonna ride down. They're not gonna ride up and they're not gonna show the big white blast in back if they get stretched too much. I think some of you ladies have had that experience happen to you. So if you guys want to purchase these awesome outfits, like this one Zoe has on here with the leggings on top, all you have to do is go to tightmedicalcenter.com, click on the clothing, and you can shop there for all our great items and these especially. Or you can call or text us at 727-389-3220 and we can hook you up through the phone. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, checking out Zoe and this awesome pink camel. Thank you Zoe for coming in and, and demonstrate and show everybody the way they can look in a tight medical center outfit. What's up guys, John here. And Charisse. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. It's been a great, great week for us here. And uh, we got some tips and some tricks. We also got some information for you guys. So usually every week, me and Charisse break it down for you guys. And some of these tips, tricks, to help your guys' relationship get stronger, better, and maybe uh, even reunite that spark in the bedroom and out. Mm -hmm. So uh, this week, we want to talk about a couple different things. First one is about the bedroom. And no, not the way that you guys are thinking, okay? Dirty we can nice. talk about that later on, but we can't talk about that on TV. Not on so, ABC. So let's talk about ways that couples sleep because it's really important. Yep. You want to know why? Because it's good for your health. It will tell about where you're at in your relationship, what's going on possibly. So let's get into the first topic ways that couples sleep and this will kind of make sense to you You might think back about your relationship and when it first started and did you do these things so the first one the first position that people sleep in usually when they're first getting together and everything like that is spooning yeah spooning's fun large spoon and small spoon <laughs> where's he going for this listen i've researched <laughs> this all day long now where's the baby spoon there's no baby spoon unless you make a baby spoon. Mm. So we're not making any baby spoons here, okay? <laughs> we're talking about the larger spoon, which is the outside partner. And usually that is the most protective one. Now, I can't say it's a male because Wait, we I have was say, female, is that supposed female relationships. To be male or female? Well, because we have all different types of relationships with all different types of genders, we're not going to specify. Mm. We're going to say that the outside spoon, the larger spoon, is the more protective person right um that's usually the person that puts the arm over the other person mm. which is the little spoon who's you know getting protected <laughs> by the larger listen guys th this is some very serious in that stuff so cute okay and i'm breaking it down for you guys so you guys understand this. and maybe you guys didn't know about these things i didn't know hey i don't know till now you know i i, I read about these different things you know i go over different relationships and then you know and some of the stuff i do read i'm like wow this does apply to my relationship or this is what we went through or this is what we did mm -hmm. so i want to just give you guys this information maybe you guys were like wow it might click something you, you never know yeah all right so after the spooning right then you go into a couple different phases depending on where your relationship's at. Now it could be loose spooning, right? So you still got the arm over there, but you guys are a little bit farther apart, okay? Mm -hmm. You're not so tied together. You've got uh, the side by side, which is you guys either facing each other or towards, you know, you guys' back towards each other. And where you guys are at in this position tells a world about your relationship. Mm. Because if you guys are back to back and you guys are both spread to the very, very edges of the bed, then that can say that, hey, listen, something is uncomfortable in the relationship or you guys are not as tight as you used to be. What if the bed is really small? So if the bed is really small, so we'll get into that later, but you don't want to have a small bed either, <laughs> all right? It's actually, it will disturb the sleep patterns of your partner oh, because be you might terrible. be bumping them, you might be moving in the night, the mattress might not be one of those awesome ones that you can set your side and they set their side. 
we're not that updated, okay? I don't have we, that. We, we've got a regular mattress. Yeah. Where if you move and you toss and turn, you're probably going to keep your partner up, okay? That's not nice. Uh, if you're snoring and stuff like that, that's a whole different subject. But if you're closer, you're obviously going to hear it or they might be snoring in your ear. I told John, okay? you just use a pillow, put it over their face. <laughs> It'll handle that snoring for you. So if I don't show up for next Sunday, keep it snoring, you know what happened to me. He doesn't snore, he's fine. <laughs> so that's another one. Now you also have the Hollywood style sleeping position. This is something that you usually see in movies, you see in, mm -hmm. uh, in TV shows, and you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. And you might do this with your significant other. Uh, wait, me and John used to do this until he had a bad shoulder. It was called, it's called the Hollywood style. I didn't know that. That's where, you know, usually the male or the predominant person, alpha, whoever it is, because we're not talking about different genders here, mm -hmm. is laying back and has the arm and then... And then this one's like this. And then you just put your arm over and you're sleeping <laughs> like this, right? Now, you know, a couple of different things happen. Now, this might work for some relationships and some people. It doesn't happen for a lot of people because... Different people sleep different ways. So some people like to sleep on their sides. On some people like right, to sleep yeah. on their stomachs, right? Some people do and can sleep on their backs. And the person that has the alpha who's having that has to sleep on their back if the woman's gonna, usually going to sleep uh, or the person is going to sleep on their shoulder and the inside. Um, now, that person has to be comfortable, too, with the person's body that they're laying on because they won't get good sleep either. Mm -hmm. The whole point of you guys sleeping is to get good, restful sleep because it's good for your health, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's good for the relationship too as well. So these are just some of the different positions that you guys might be sleeping in or it can tell a lot about your relationship. And you know, if you don't believe me, go on Google, research <laughs> couples sleeping positions and you will see a lot of information. Way more information than I thought was gonna be on there. Yeah, like, I mean, me like and John crazy. used to sleep like that and now we sleep with our backs turned to each other. Yeah, but close. Yeah, yeah, no, we sleep close. Yeah. Yeah, I just like sleeping on my right, my right side. He'll sleep wherever. I toss and turn. He he's got the dog on his side. We do this thing where like the dog sheds, oh, no. right? No, no. So no, the no. dog stays on his side of the bed, no. and that means he has to sleep a certain way, and then eventually that he does gets. Not mean yeah, he gets over it, and then he's got to get the dog off the bed so he can get comfortable. That's not true at all. So the reason that I sleep different is because I have two sure. bad shoulders. I have slap tears superior labrum anterior and posterior tears ouch so at that point it's very very uncomfortable for me to sleep and i do like to sleep on my sides even if i was to sleep on my stomach i get pain if i sleep on my back the shoulder like falls out of the the, the little ball joint action the labrum that's in there so at that point listen it's uncomfortable in any way um, but I do like to sleep on my sides. I think that's the best thing. I get the most rest that way. So I think one of the most important things, though, is to sleep together and yeah. to try to coordinate the bedtime together. Absolutely. Because a lot of people, I know you guys work different shifts, and you know maybe somebody works a night shift, morning shift, whatever it might be, and then now all of a sudden, you know, your partner is sleeping totally different hours as you, and yeah. you know you got the TV on in the middle of the night, yeah. and the person doesn't want the TV on, or you got your little lamp on now it's shining in their face, and you know, you have to be considerate. Even cell phones or tablets at this point. Because it's bright. bright. And I mean, they, you could turn it down, but it's still bright. They illuminate blue light, okay? Yeah. Which can and is proven to actually disturb your sleep patterns or maybe keep you up. Mm -hmm. And this could happen to your partner too if they're looking at that stuff. Now, some devices and stuff like that, you can turn that light off, which is pretty cool. You can wear glasses, but are you going to wear these glasses in bed before bed? Mm -hmm. You maybe. know, maybe, I guess. I just uh, got some really cute clear ones. I was going to put them on for you so you can see. Oh, I think they're really, really cute. I like that. That yeah, sounds good. It's cute. <laughs> no. So, um, th this is just some of the different things that you guys can do. Now, obviously, if there's any problems in the bed, like people snoring and stuff like that, address it with your partner. There are different ways that you can get possibly over the snoring issue. If you don't tell me, just keep nudging them, it's just going to keep happening. Okay? And it's going to disturb both your sleep patterns still at that point because you're going to be waking up, then you're going to nudge them, it's going to wake them up. That's going to be a problem for both of you guys. Okay? Um, so, that's the first thing, all right? Health and sleeping together in the relationship in the same bed. And make sure you're coordinating to have times together so you guys are sleeping together. It creates more of a bond for you guys too as well. You wouldn't think it, but you guys in that bed. Plus comfortability. Um, you know, some people can't fall asleep without this other near them or by them. I can't. Or want them by them nope. because they feel more comfortable about it. Yep. Um, you know, now if you do this, you know, you could become codependent on, on your partner or I'm spouse. So at that point, that might work for you guys. It might not work for you guys. It's it works for great. us, yeah. but it might not work for other people out there. And, you know, most of the information I've read about couples spending all their time together usually says negative things. But yeah. 
I am, and her are the living proof that, listen, it can work for some couples, yeah. and every couple is usually different. Um, so at that point, you have to see what works for you guys and make sure that you're not annoying your partner uh, and make sure that they can live with that because if you want some long-lasting relationship, you know, that's what it's going to be. Um, so that's just one thing. So I was coming across another study, and we've talked about kissing and how the benefits of kissing in the relationship and how it increases health and, and, and increases dopamine and, and, and also oxytocin in the mm -hmm. brain and stuff like that, which is like happy hormones um, and bonding hormones. So I was reading a study today because we're obviously married and we talk to married couples or couples that might possibly get married in the future. Mm -hmm. And it was really crazy on one of the last studies that happened. So it said that one in five married couples only kiss once a week. That's kind of crazy. That's crazy. Once a week. That's crazy. You know, actually, just to bounce in there real quick, because this is very important, every single night before I go to bed, I give John a kiss. Yes. And I tell him good night. Yes. And I say I love you. Yes. Every single night, even when he's dozing off, I'm like, yep. hey, get up real quick. Yep. <laughs> he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do this, but she, you just woke she, me up. Thanks a lot. my sleeping patterns. What <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about not to do. But, but... But she gets a kiss yep. before I go to bed. Every night. It's important. So that, that's kind of crazy. Um, the other thing is, is that when these couples or married couples finally lock lips, it's usually for five seconds. Whoa. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Five seconds. And at that point, more than 40% of those couples might not even kiss at all. So it's it's pretty crazy. I find that a little crazy. Yeah. Don't you think that's unhealthy? Because when they find you locked lips, it will no longer last than five seconds for forty percent of them. Excuse me. So forty percent of those couples that lock lips, it will only be for five seconds. So sixty percent of the couples could be kissing for longer, I guess. Okay. So funny thing that's is, better. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this in there too because it was really funny and it's true. So do you remember what Peter said this weekend? Yeah, so Peter asked... Uh, we were at the pool, all right, and we we're hanging out. Why don't we French kiss or something like that? <laughs> he goes, because like he, he, you had, literally, there was this couple that was in the pool, and, you know, obviously, they must be in the honeymoon period, because they were, like, all over each other, need, a, need, need to get a room, not in the pool, and because we're PDA. in the... We're, yeah, we're in the, like, the kids' pool, so why are you in the kids' pool? At least go to the adult pool and do your thing over there. Anyway, so my kid's over there staring at this you know, wonderful couple that, you know, making out in the pool. And he's like, hey, mom, he's like, you, do you and dad, like, you guys don't French kiss? And it's like, I guess to some degree, you don't. You're not. And then I, I did. I came to you and I was like, isn't it funny he just said that? Because, well, you know, you're not really supposed to, I guess, you know, like you shouldn't be French kissing all over the place. I think you're French kiss. I think that's really up to the couple where they're at and what the situation is, okay? And just, I mean. Like just, all over, though. So you do, just do a very um, situation. And usually it's, a, it's the... It's the new honeymooning couples or couples that are first starting day and they're mm -hmm. getting to know each other and starting to do this. So I looked up why, right? And it said, this is where the main reasons why people don't fresh ki French kiss anymore. And me and Sharice do French kiss, but we do it behind, behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Now we do kiss a lot as far as, you know, smooches and stuff like that, and lips, locking lips and stuff like that. But um, the reasons why. So one was, there's not enough time. Now that you guys are together <laughs> as a couple, there's work, there's family, there's all these different things. That was one. Funny. Two, um, you don't need to French kiss anymore to be, to be aroused by your partner. I guess that has something to do with it. I, I don't know why because I would think that French kissing, even if you were used to your partner, is going to help with arousal, mm -hmm. right, with intimate contact, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, listen, you can kiss your grandma on the cheek, you know, you know whoever it right. is. You know, when you're passionately going with, with the person, then obviously, you know, it should probably cause or stimulate more arousal. Um, so that was another one. Um, the other one was, you know, basically you, you don't need to anymore. There's just no energy into you it. You should. Uh, at that point, you don't have any energy to do it. And, and just, you know, you've moved on and you've grown in your relationship. That's what it said. You know, I don't agree with any of that. Mm -hmm. But that's what it's out there. So the main thing I want to take away from this is, is really you should be talking or getting information or, you know, advice from Pretty successful couples. Mm -hmm. you know, some of the information that I read on the internet about couples hits it right on the head. Or for us, mm -hmm. and maybe I'm wrong because maybe there's couples out there that, that go along with this. Perfect. And maybe they are doing okay. Um, you know, but most you know, there's some of the things that I read that I, I'm like, man, this is this is like this is mm -hmm. this is death for the relationship. This is going down a one way street and not coming back. Like you you were set. I mean, I would failure. probably ask John if there was a problem. 
I would. Yeah. I would be like, is there an issue or am I doing something wrong yeah. or yeah. Yeah. do you not love me anymore? Oh, God. <laughs> those questions, guys. Watch <laughs> out for those questions. <laughs> Females, do not give those questions out just like that. <laughs> the guy's going to be like, no, honey, you know, I love you. And, you know, they're going to say <laughs> these things. And most of the time they mean it and sometimes they might not. So mm. it just depends where your relationship is at. I mean, of course, it. all the time. It. So, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, this is just one of the surveys and some of the information that I've seen online. So if you're going online and you're looking for information to help you guys, first of all, you should be listening to us. Yeah, keep its corner. And if you haven't seen every one of our episodes, you need to go to YouTube and check it out. Yeah. You can check out all the Keep It's Corners and get all this great information. And if you need to, press the repeat button and watch it again and again and again. Yeah. Maybe you're going to come across somebody out there that needs this information. Maybe you have a friend, you're like, you know, you're, you're not that good at giving your advice or you haven't been in a successful relationship. Pass on the link, man. Tell them to go to Titan Medical Center YouTube and we'll give you all the information. Males and females will give you guys the tips and the tricks for success, okay? For Cupid's Corner success. So, guys, this has been another great Cupid's Corner segment. We love bringing this information to you guys. You got anything else to add? Oh, thanks, John, for doing all the footwork on all this cool research. <laughs> See, guys can do this, okay? So it and is what it is. And it's good to always recognize that as a woman. Credit, credit, giving credit where credit is due, exactly. both male and female, okay? Partners, 50-50. That's always. what it is, what it's all about. So, guys, keep it locked to our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, of course, our YouTube. And, guys, join us every week for Cupid's Corner every Sunday, 11 a.m. on ABC. Or you can catch it on social media if you don't live in the great state of Florida or you don't have time. You can always DVR it too as well. Make sure to check out the Facebook Titan page and that will have it on there too if you're looking for it. So guys, it's been a great Cupid's Corner. Thank you for joining in. And I'll see you next week. See you then.